All right, so my friends, welcome. Complete set review. Streets of New Capenna. Every card. Constructed, limited. We're doing all of them. Green is next. You missed white, blue, black, and red. Go watch them on YouTube. All right? We're doing all the cards. Constructed and limited. Best in show. Uh, we got our bomb in common. A bunch of rewards to give out. It's a lot of fun. First thing, hit that, that, uh, hit that follow button. Like, comment, subscribe. Support the stream. Do it all. Let's go. I, I still got a voice. We're not, we're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. First card here is Attended Socialite. Two minutes for a two drop. Elf Druid. Alliance ability. Alliance is the uh, Cabaretti or Naya ability. It's basically creature fall. Whenever a creature ETBs, you get a trigger. And in this case, this creature gets plus almost one to end of turn. So this is basically a 3 2 for 2. That will occasionally be a little better than that. Uh, and there's also a bit of trickiness also with the flow with like, with like flash creatures, but very solid 2 drop in limited. Solid 2 drop, tax for 3. Uh, bread and butter 2 drop for sure. Solid card. Solid card. Constructed? No, obviously. Our second card is Bootlegger's Stash. This card is freaking awful. <laughs> Six mana artifact. Lands you control have tapped to make a treasure. So you pay six mana, you untap, and you don't get anything. <laughs> so you, all of your lands tap to make a mana. Now if you want, you can store your, art, your treasures and then next turn get a boost. But six mana? Are you kidding me? Uh, this card is terrible. Uh, play Marari's Wake. Play Nissa Who Shakes the World. Just play something else. Uh, yeah, you can time Steven Commander. Go do your thing. But uh, for for serious competitive play in any aspect, this card's terrible. Uh, and then limited this card's terrible. Commander players, have fun. Do your thing. That's not me. That's not me. Bouncers beat down. Demand it for an instant. This is the black color hate. I'm sorry, the black. Yeah, I guess black color hate card. The green color hate card. Uh, instant. Deals X damage to our creature or Planeswalker, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. A creature or Planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. And obviously, if you're playing as black, it costs it cost one. Uh, great limited card. Just a good fight effect. Good, good bite card. Uh, and then it constructed. It's close. Um... It's Blizzard Brawl-esque, I suppose, he constructed. Uh, so, possibly playable. But, yeah, Green Exile is a little weird, I agree. But, uh, yeah, so good limited card, constructed cyborg card, you get the idea. Broken Wings, this card's in every set. The cyborg card, limited. Cabaretti Initiate. I'm gonna get that leg. Uh, one mana for a 1-2 Raccoon Citizen. Three mana to give it Double Strike. Um, this is the kind of card where, like, if you have ways to augment your creatures, sure. I mean, make it a 2-3 or a 3-4. Now we're talking. But uh, for the most part... Um, Bingo! All right. All right, there it is. Uh, is uh, Card's not super exciting. Card's not super exciting. Unless you can augment it. Call the Strong Arm is a 5-mana 2-3. When ETBs put two counters on target creature. So, of course, there you go with the initiate. Kind of a way to do that. And it blitzes for 4. The blitz ability is... You may cast the card for a blitz, and it becomes a cantrip ball lightning, basically. Comes into play, has haste. When it dies, you draw a card, sack it on the next end step. So, obviously, if you were to blitz this onto your Cabaretti Initiate, attack for two, now your initiate's bigger, and you draw a card. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's a pretty solid common. It's a pretty solid common. Fail state is just a 4-5 with counters on it, which isn't bad either. But, again, it's not amazing, but it's solid. Solid 5 drop. I think the Blitz here is a little better than it looks for sure. If you think of the Blitz like a four mana sorcery, put two counters, draw a card, deal two, that's not bad. That's not bad. So flexible, powerful card. I like it. Solid, solid draft common. Solid draft common. The new Cabana Express. Doo -doo. Six, uh, four mana for a six, six vehicle crew three. So we saw this card in, uh, in the last set. It was blue. However... It has the ability to sack a treasure and crew, which makes this card a whole lot better. I think this card is really, really good. Um, the sacrifice treasure ability is phenomenal. And the fact that it, you can do one or the other, crew three isn't ideal, but it's doable. But sacrificing a treasure is insane. The fact that the crew three there is, is a fail safe when you have treasures is good also. Uh, if you're playing a treasure based deck, this card, I think, is going to be really really good uh really good so very very good draft payoff card for treasure deck 
Uh, I like it a lot. Real good card. Very close to Bomb and Common, but not quite. But not quite. Civic Gardener's next. Another good two drop. Two mana for a 2 2. Attack with it. Untap your land. Pseudo mana ramp. Can untap creatures also, which is kind of cool. Has to attack, obviously, but it's a solid card. It's a solid card. It's a citizen. Just your bread and butter, kind of like limited two drop. Cleanup Crew. This card is an absolute house. Honey Mammoth eats your heart out. Six mana for a 6 6. Human Citizen. ETBs. Disenchant. Exile card for the graveyard or gain four life. Gain four life is your base mode, right? So this this is often a common, but often a good common in 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 uh, in past sets. But the ability to kill an artifact or enchantment instead is great. Great limited card, super awesome, super awesome. Quarter's reef case two mana for a artifact treasure. ETBs make it make a one one, sack it for a treasure and make a treasure or whatever. Or you can Wooberg and sack it to draw three cards. This card feels very similar to the enchantment from Kaldheim to me, uh, where it's okay by itself. It's just a treasure and then a 1-1, which isn't that bad. But I think five colors is very doable in this set, and this is a great payoff for that. So if you're that, this card's great and limited. Uh, if you're not, it's only okay. But I think that's pretty sweet. And the fact that it's also, it's a creature fall, it's a creature fall effect, it's a treasure effect, kind of cool synergy stuff. Kind of a reverse innkeeper. That's also kind of true, for sure. Where it's the, a 1-1 one -one that ramps, which is kind of cool. But solid card. Solid card, for sure. Definitely worse than innkeeper is, but it's a solid card. And then again, if you're just treasuring, getting Wubrook's also easy, too. So the payoff shouldn't be too hard to get as well. Solid card. Solid draft card. Possible constructed. Elegant Entourage next is a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, so already great. Creature fall. Unfair creature ETBs. A different creature gets plus one to trample. This card's phenomenal. Just phenomenal draft card. Uh, everything you want in a draft card. Great rate, good ability, pushes through, gains trample, scales well. Solid, solid draft card. Evolving Door. Uh, this card stinks. Uh, was close to the trap card, but I have a better one. This card sucks. This card is not birthing pod. It is not birthing pod. Three mana for an artifact. Pay one sack creature. Count the number of colors of sacrifice creature. Then search your library for a creature card that's exactly that many colors plus one. Exile it, then shuffle. You may cast that card. You gotta freaking cast it, folks. You gotta freaking cast it. Most birthing pods don't gotta cast the card. This is just sack a creature to find a creature and pay it for one more than you wanted to pay for it. Uh, this card sucks. This card sucks. And limited this card sucks. Just bad. Don't play it. Fight rigging is the green hideaway enchantment. Again, hideaway, of course, is look at top five, but when face down, if you meet the condition, play it for free. Be any combat your turn, put a plus muscle encounter on a creature you control. So, Luminarch Aspirant, but as a three mana enchantment, not a two mana one one, which is pretty bad. Then, if you control a creature, power seven or greater, you can play the exiled card that paying its mana cost. And limited, this card's great uh, because the, the plusing effect is certainly reasonable. Again, the Brokos ability uh, synergies are based around counters, which is very important. So it adds counters to things, which is great. And then if you get to cast a card for free, it's also a bonus as well. In limited, you'll probably get there, which is great. It's just card advantage. And constructed, probably not good enough. Um, it's a better three mana enchantment that puts counters on things we'll see later. Uh, and I doubt that you're getting there on the seven power or greater. But good draft card. Good draft card for sure. Uh, I think it is the best, the best hideaway card. But again, that is a low bar. I do agree. So good draft card. Probably not a constructed, but good draft card for sure. For the family, one mana instant. Creature gets plus two, plus two. You control four more creatures. It gets plus four, plus four. Good limited trick. I love one mana tricks. Scales up pretty well. If you're aggressive and you're playing creatures, it's not hard to have four creatures. Not like insane. Um, and then, um, just fine. Just fine. Whole review is always on YouTube. Always on YouTube. Freelance Muscle is our next card here. 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four uncommon. Whatever attacks or blocks gets plus X, plus X on the turn. Or X is the greatest power to have among other creatures you control. This thing is a house. Oh my god, Becky. A house. If you have a 3-3 three, three in play, this thing attacks and blocks at 7-7, seven, seven, and it only gets bigger. It only gets bigger. So, great limited card. I like a lot that it counts on attacks and blocks. If it's only on attacks... The worry would be when you cast this card, 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four is not good enough defensively. 
But the fact that it works on blocks means this card is just an absolute house. Great card. The floor isn't too bad. Great limited card. Great limited card. Gallic Readers. Two mana for a Elf 1-1. One, one. Creature Fall. Choose one. But it can't be one more than once. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Make a treasure token. And gain two life. For limited, this card's phenomenal. This is an excellent two drop in limited. Everything you ever wanted. It scales. It makes treasures. It can gain some life. In Constructed, I think if this card was a 2-2, it would be like an ace 2-drop. Like a great 2-drop. But as a 1-1, one, one, uh, it I think it just starts out too small and doesn't really get you there. And then it also makes tap treasures, so you can't really pop off with it. Um, I think overall, don't forget Alliance is another creature, not itself. So if it triggered on itself, for sure, it'd be a 2-2. Two, two, or it would be an innkeeper, which would be great. But it is another creature. So it's a 1-1, one, one, doesn't do anything. And then later on, it can grow. I think it's not quite there in uh, Constructed, but Phenomenal Limited card. And I think it's reasonable enough. Uh, where if this card saw play Constructed, I wouldn't be surprised. But I think it's a little below the bar. I think it's a little below the bar. Glittermonger is next, and uh, this is a 4-mana for a 1-4 tap to make a treasure. Now, obviously worse than just like a 4-mana mana elf, but making treasures has a lot of value. There are a lot of treasure synergies, and it, it at worst, it's a 1-4 that adds to any color. At best, you bank up treasures, use it for synergies, build up something bigger, splashing cards. Card's fine. Card's solid card. Good body. Uh, defends pretty well. Uh, card's sweet. Card's sweet. Decent common. Nothing amazing. I think if you're not you know, using treasure treasure cards uh, too synergy-wise, it's not great, but it's pretty good. Pretty good. Constructed, no, but limited solid card. High-Rise Sawjack. Nothing fancy here, just a solid rate card. Three mana for a 2-3 reach when it blocks a flyer. It gets four plus plus two plus so. It's good. It's good. It's a good blocker for flyers. It's a citizen. Just fine. You board it out, but not many flyers, but maybe you board it for flyers, but it's just a solid card. Solid card. Jewel Thief... Jewel Thief, Jewel Thief. Our bomb in common. What is what is going on these days? I think that, like, Wizards have made a conscious effort to try and make really good green commons lately. Because for the longest time, the best green common was a joke compared to the best, like, blue, white, and uh, black and red commons. Jewel Thief is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three, with Vigilance and Trample and makes a treasure. Um... You remove any one of those abilities, and this card is still a very reasonable draft card. Uh, so, at a common, this card's phenomenal. Probably the best green common, I would think, uh, just on raid alone. It it ramps you, it fixes you, it makes treasures, it attacks, it blocks, it slices, it dices. Uh, you're, it's just great. It's really, really good. Constructed, honestly, it's like a little bit close and constructed if you really want the treasure or whatever. Probably not, but in limited, just unbelievable, just unbelievable, just super, super bonkers common, just so good, just so good. Up next is Luxurious Libation, and this is a very easy card to misevaluate. Green X instant, creature gets X plus X plus X end of turn, make a 1-1. One, one. This card should be looked at first as a 1-1 one, one green creature, or 1-1 one, one, uh, for 1 green with flash, that can trigger all of your alliance effects. With Kicker, pump your creature. So, as a pump spell, it looks kind of bad until you realize it's not really a pump spell. It's, so, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 with an, ET, with an ET Kicker ability that pumps things. And it triggers all of your alliance stuff as well. Um, this card's good. This card's good, honestly. I think this card's a very, very solid limited card. And honestly, you know, in Constructed, a 1-1 one, one flash for 1 with extra upside, could maybe, like, possibly be a thing. But in limited, this card's super great. Super, super great. Very good card. Everyone's going to undervalue it at first. Don't be one of those people. Most Wanted is next. Most Wanted is a 3-mana aura. It's got Flash, gets plus 2, plus 1. And the creature dies, make 2 treasures. Not really good enough, I don't think. Um, I don't think 2 treasures are worth a card. So if you play this and you don't win the combat and the creature dies, I think you've lost out on material. So if it was plus two, plus two, I think we're down here because they don't usually win the combat. But I think plus two, plus one isn't enough. I think this card's bad. 
Instacart's bad. Prize fights next. So mana for a fight and then make a treasure. Uh, it's good. Fight cards are good. Makes treasures good. Just good solid limited card. Look at freaking Rocket getting in there. Rocket knocking out the freaking Rhino. You love to see it. Although, this doesn't make sense because it's a fight, not a bite. So, that raccoon looks like a 1-1 or a 2-2. And that rhino looks like a 4-4. So, this is not a fight the raccoon would win. So, our protagonist of this card might actually be the rhino, not the uh, the raccoon. Just saying. Just saying. But, uh, yeah, solid limited card for sure. Rock's Pummeler is next. This card's cool. 6 mana for a 6-3. It ETPs with a shield counter. And then has Trample as long as it has a shield counter on it. So this card's pretty good. Uh, you play it and it can block anything and trade, but then live again. Or it just smashes and uh, that's pretty good too. So I think this is a great turf curve topper in limited. Like a great curve topper. Think of shield effects kind of like Undying where you get two shots into the creature and this is a really good one to have. With Trample, it blocks well. Good Curve Stopper. Good Curve Stopper. River's Decoy. Two mana for a 3 one, which is fine. Must be blocked with Blitz. Uh, solid card. Solid card. Can force trades the opponent doesn't want to make. Um, important to note that everything doesn't need to block it. So it's not like you... Uh, it's not like you can Taunting Elf and just like, you know, get the big attack in. But you can Blitz it as like a pseudo removal spell. They, have a, they play a 3-3 flyer, you play this, splits it, you kill their thing, and draw a card, which is pretty good. So, this card's very, very good. This card's very, very good, mostly with the Blitz effect, uh, because the fact that it cantrips is really, really good. So, even if you just, like, Blitz this, attack into their 2-2, make them block, and then trade, that's 2-for-1. It's pretty good. So, solid card. Solid card. Social Climber, the mana for a 3-1, creature fall, gain one life, just filler. Filler draft card. Filler draft card. Take to the streets. Five mana sorcery. Plus two, plus two for all your creatures. Citizens get plus one, plus one, and vigilance. So no trample here kind of stinks. However, if you're going super wide in your alliance deck, you have a lot of citizen tokens. This is a great finisher. Uh, no trample sucks, but it's still a great finisher. And will probably put your opponent in a spot where you might not kill them because there's a trample. But they're going to make some, need to make some horrible blocks and probably be in a losing position. So, great curve topper for limited. Um, definitely want to play it with citizens. I don't think plus two, plus two is enough by itself. But if you're playing citizens, you're playing tokens, uh, that's great. So, good, good, good curve topper in that respect. Uh, yep, yeah, cool. Titan of Industry. We're going best in show here. And uh, I know this card costs seven mana. But it'd be really, really hard to want more out of a 7-drop than Titan of Industry. It is a 7-mana, seven 7-7. Seven, seven. Reach, Trample. So, it's got the defensive angle covered and the offensive angle on having Reach. When an ETBs choose 2, Disenchant, gain 5, make a 4-4, four, four, or Shields Up. And Shields Up is the big one. So, we play this thing. And... I think the default mode is most often going to be make a 4-4 shield counter. All right. That puts a 7-7 seven, seven shields up reach blocker in play. It's also a great attacker. A 4-4 four, four also in play for 7 mana. That's awesome. It is bad against Banishing Burst. That is fair. Totally fair. Um, but you still get the card advantage off, which is pretty good. Uh, it can kill enchantments or artifacts in a, in a pinch. It can gain life in a pinch. Uh, you know, gain five, make a 4-4 four, four is great for stabilizing its aggro decks. If it was a rampy kind of deck, uh, this card is definitely the main centerpiece of that deck. Um, if there's no deck for it, this card might not see play. For sure. For sure. And it's betting its counter spells. For sure. For sure. But I think compared to the other cards in green, I think this is probably the card that has the potential for the biggest impact. Uh, so, card's good. I like it. And in limited, obviously... Palaka Worm was great and limited. And this is Palaka Worm on freaking steroids. Uh, freaking steroids. So, super solid card. Super, super solid card. Like it a lot. Fun card to ramp into. I'm down. Me and Titan Ministry are going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun for sure. Up next is Topiary Stomper. And 
We got a sleeper. It's a card that plays really well with the uh, the last card we just saw. This card is pretty cool. I like this card a lot. So we have a green, green one for a four, four vigilance. When it ETBs, you rampant growth, but it can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands. Now that is a huge downside, similar to, to uh, Wayward, Wayward Sword Tooth. But the fact that you're getting a, a ramp effect for three mana, which is, which is reasonable, and then a good body also once you've ramped up enough, is it's very very good. Um, there are other ramp effects in the format. Of course, don't forget that Quandrix, all the blue green cards still exist in this format, um, which are reasonable as well. I don't think this is a crazy card to ramp up. At a four four, it can crew things as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, I think this card is good. I think this card is pretty solid. I know it looks kind of trappy. This is not a card you just put in your deck. But if you're going to play this card and Quandrix Cultivator and like focus on ramping up to both A, hit a point where you have seven lands to play for this, and B, just play a big boom boom, that's good. That's good. You can blink it, which is kind of awesome as well. Um, the fact that you're ramping and getting some value later is good. Uh, you can fight with it. You can use like, you know, Blizzard Brawl and friends as well. So it does things without needing to attack or block. And then it gets to attack or block also. So again, I think this is the kind of card, you can't just put this card in your deck. You definitely want to have a plan for it. But I think this card could be very good in the right deck. Um, and then in limited, in limited, I think it's worse. Um, I think that it is playable on limited because three mana ramp with a little extra value is good. There are vehicles as well. Uh, there are fight spells as well. So it is good and limited, but not great. Uh, but I think it's definitely solid. I think it's definitely solid. I think at a 5-5, five five, this card's bonkers. Like, actually actively really good. As a 4-4, four four, I think it's a solid sleeper that is a lot better than you think it is. Because remember, sleeper is not like the best card of the set. Sleeper is a card that people are completely ignoring that I think is playable, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. So, that's our sleeper card. Uh, Topiary Stomper. Move right along here to Venom Connoisseur. It's meant for a 2-2. Two -two. Creature Fall gets Death Touch. If two creatures come into the battlefield, all your things get Death Touch. Phenomenal draft card. Uh, just a solid 2-2 with great upside. And then allowing all your shitter tokens to attack into their bigger creatures is, is amazing. Also, uh, great 2-drop. In limited. Great 2-drop. But, um, constructed, no. But solid limited 2-drop. Vivian of the Hunt. What are we going to do with Vivian here? Six mana Planeswalkers tend to not do very well. Six is a lot. We've had a lot of really, really powerful six mana Planeswalkers that just haven't broken through. Uh, Liliana, Dread Horde General. Uh, the six mana Garrick from Eldraine. Um, the other six mana Liliana, uh, Professor Onyx or whatever. And they're all, uh, the, the blue one, Morden, Morden Kynan or whatever. The cards are all really, really good. But six mana is just so much to spend in a Planeswalker, um, no matter how good it is. You know, so... Six mana Planeswalker, four loyalty, plus two Birthing Pod, which is good. Don't get me wrong. It's a pretty powerful effect, and it's a plus two, which is a lot. But um, you got to be podding profitably. It means having a thing in play you want to pod, having a thing you want to get. It's a lot of hoops. It's a lot of hoops. Plus one is mill five. Then put any number of creature cards mill this way into your hand. That's good. I could draw two cards on average, probably. And the minus one make a 4-4, four, four, which is also good. Play this, make a 4-4, four, four, have a 3 load to Planeswalker. That's pretty good, too. But again, like, I think 6 mana is just too much. I think 6 mana is just it's just too much mana to spend. Um, it's a concern. It's a concern. So, definitely a cool card. I think it's definitely playable. It's funny because, like, the Tertiary Stomper, the 7 drop, Renin 7, Vivian of the Hunt could all kind of go together, maybe, in some sort of, like, big green rampy deck, which can be kind of cool. But we'll see. Definitely playable, but I do think this card is a, is a little iffy. Is a little iffy, uh, just due to the cost. In limited, slam dunk bomb, uh, make four fours, win the game, yada yada yada. It's whatever. Voice of the Vermin is a four mana for a two two. Shields up when it attacks. Creature you control is base power and up this two, four four on turn. This card's good. This card's good. So this card sort of solves the problem of being a bad blocker because it's a two two for four by having the shield. So if you're desperate, you can just like chump block with it, lose the shield, untap, and then it becomes a 4-4 when it attacks, which is also good. Uh, you can also just change other things to 4-4s as well. Uh, card's good. 
It's a buy limited card. Nothing incredible, but it's a solid four drive unlimited. Uh, solid four drive unlimited. It's cool. It's cool. Warm welcome is a three minute instant. Look at the top five cards of your library. Reveal a creature, put it in your hand, make it 1 1. This is your like enabler for alliance and instant speed, but you're not getting a great rate here. This is much worse than Spirited Companion because obviously you're getting a 1 1 and I got a card, but like cost three, not two. Um, I think if the cards went to the graveyard, there's a little extra value here of this card to be sweet. But I think as it stands, unless you have a, a lot of alliance effects you want to trigger instant speed, it's kind of underwhelming. Or you have a bomb you're fishing for, it's kind of underwhelming. Kind of underwhelming. Then we come to Workshop Warchief. It's a trap. Folks, I have bad news for you. I knew Thrag Tusk, and this card ain't Thrag Tusk. All right, green, green, three. Rhino Warrior Trample. It's a 5 3 trample. When it ETPs, you gain 3 life. All right? When it dies, make a 4 4. The problem is, Thrag Tusk was leaves the battlefield. That's what made that card so good. You couldn't exile it, you couldn't bounce it, you couldn't do anything to it, and you could blink it. Restoration Angel, Thrag Tusk, all day. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. All right? This card, you can't blink it for value. There's a ton of exile effects that just exile it and punk you. And then you're only getting three life, not five. It does have trample, which is a bit of an upside for sure. But three is a lot less than five. And while a 4-4 four, four is better than a 3-3, three, three, it's not that much better to make up for all the downsides. I think this card is mostly unplayable. Uh, it, it's fine. It's all right. But it's very unexciting. It's not gaining enough life. I think... Maybe it's the kind of card you, like, board in against, like, a mono green deck or some deck that, like, definitely can't exile it and is going to have to attack into it. Sure. I think it's reasonable there. But on the whole, I think that there's too many exile effects in the format. And this card is just not that good. I think it is playable, for sure, and it may see some play. But I think people are seeing this card and going, Thrag Dusk, and this is not Thrag Dusk. It's not even close. The Blitz ability... Don't get me wrong. People are saying in chat that like Thragdust is, is not good anymore. Thragdust would be an absolute bomb in standard. Thragdust is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It is an extremely good card. Uh, but um, this ain't Thragdust. So now, the one thing that does saving grace it a little bit is the Blitz ability. So you can Blitz this. Again, Blitz is comes into play as a ball, I think, basically, that, that can trips. Comes into play as haste. When it dies, you draw a card, and it dies at the end of turn. So you can blitz this, gain three, attack for five, make a four, four, draw a card. That's pretty good, but I don't think it's good enough. Um, I don't think it's good enough. And your opponent can still verse it, and if they verse it, you don't draw a card and you don't get the four, four. So all in all, I, I think this card just isn't that good. It, it, is it playable? Yes. Is it that good? No. I think this is our trap card, our, our trap card for sure. In limited... Absolute bonkers bomb. Take it, slam it, do a, do a backflip, whatever. Uh, just uh, do, a barrel do whatever you want to do. It's insane limited. But without without the, uh, yeah, Inconstructed, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. So, uh, oh shit, I didn't do my recap. Uh, so to recap, everyone, to recap real fast. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everyone thinks I can follow the stream while I do this. Uh, recap, recap, recap. Our best in show was Titan of Industry which I think is a, a, a big, big boom, boom. Our sleeper card, Tertiary Stomper, which works well with the, with the Titan. Our trap card, once again, was the Workshop Warchief. And our bomb in common is Jewel Thief. That's our recap for our awards for green. Hold on to your butts, folks, because Multicolor is coming next. That's where the majority of the cards are. YouTube folks, love you, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my sponsors. You're all great. Oh, boy, folks. Hold on to your butts. Multicolor is next.